All right, so by the end of this video, you're gonna know what I think are the five biggest differences between hunting elk out west and hunting deer out east. So I started out hunting whitetails out in the Midwest and over the years, I've been fortunate enough to be able to go on many elk hunts. Most of them have been filming for work, but I've also been able to do some hunts myself. And there's definitely some big differences between hunting western elk and hunting a whitetail out east. So without further ado, let's get right into them. So the first biggest difference is the home ranges of these two species. So elk, I wouldn't even say have a home range. They migrate a lot of times over hundreds of miles from their summer range to their winter range, and this can all happen during a hunting season. So where you may find an elk one night, you may not see it the next day. Bull elk have been known to travel over a dozen miles a day to go find a hot cow. So that's pretty impressive. And then on the other side of that, a white-tailed deer, they typically have smaller home ranges. The deer densities are higher in a lot of these areas, and they don't have to travel as far to go find a hot doe in the rut. So the second difference is your hunting ground. So out east, there's not huge swaths of public land, generally speaking. When I was out hunting in the east, it was small public land sections. It was private land that's tiny. I was hunting out of people's backyards. Basically, you don't have huge swaths of land like you do in the west. Elk live in vast landscapes, huge mountains. A lot of those areas don't actually hold elk. So you're gonna be traveling far and wide to find those, those critters. Basically the scale is just much larger and you're gonna have to search a lot more to be able to find those pockets of elk. Difference number three is your hunting techniques and kind of how aggressive you can be with each animal. Eastern deer hunting is a lot of stationary hunting and kind of ambush style hunting. A lot of times, you know, when I was out there, I was hunting small pieces of property. I didn't want to be walking around, spooking the deer in the next county, leaving my scent all over the place. So it kind of lended itself to stationary hunting and letting the deer come to you. You may be, you know, sitting on the edge of a bean field, a food source, or hunting in a tree stand over a scrape in October. We're out west, we're out spot and stock style hunting a lot. We're out hiking around, trying to find the elk, and then actually going to the elk. You can be super aggressive around elk. A lot of times in archery season, we're bugling within 100 yards, we're moving around. Um, they're kind of used to that, because oftentimes they're in herds and they're, they're used to uh, twigs snapping and branches breaking and, and whatnot. So um, also elk bugle, which is a big thing. And that's just the giant difference between uh, an elk and a, and a deer is they bugle, they give away their location. You can communicate a little bit better. All right, number four is field extraction. And like, there's not too much to be said about this because I don't think very many people are gonna argue with me about this, is packing out an elk and extracting an elk out of you know public land or private land or whatever is a lot harder than taking a deer out. In the early season, you really have to have a plan on how you're gonna do that because oftentimes it's super warm in say September. We've gotten temperatures almost into the 90 degree range in September before. So you need to have a plan on how to get that elk out. Oftentimes you're hiking up and down with heavy loads and multiple miles doing multiple trips. Whereas like a deer, most of the time you can just field dress it and drag it out. Or if you're you know a mile or two away from your truck, you can, uh, quarter it and, and carry it out in one load. So this also leads me into my last point. Um, number five is physical fitness. And this is something that I have like definitely struggled, like gone through ebbs and flows of. Being in shape is a huge advantage to Western elk hunting. These elk, like I, you know, in the points I said before, you have to search very far for them. They're often not near roads. You gotta hike up mountains. The more in shape you are, the easier that is, and you're more likely to go the distance. You know, there's been times where I've spotted an elk and, you know, just thought to myself, there's no way I'm gonna be able to go do that, and I, I wind up not doing it. Whereas, like, if you have that physical fitness level, you're gonna be more energized to go on those long hikes. You're gonna be more excited to go in, actually kill something, and pack it out. I hope I don't hurt anyone's feelings here, but like you don't have to be in shape to hunt whitetails out in the east. Like I was the biggest I ever was hit, sitting in tree stands killing deer. 
All right, and with that, those are what I. Uh, all right, and with that, those are what I think are the five biggest differences between Western elk hunting and whitetail deer hunting out east. Um, I'm not saying these things to deter anyone from doing it. You guys really should come out and hunt. It's a lot of fun, and hopefully these tips can help you prepare for your first elk hunt. Um, if you guys think I missed anything, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to read them and get back to you, and I'll see you on the next one.